Hey guys, what's up? It's Anya. How are you? I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you are feeling well and you are well rested. I just wanted brothers and sisters to bless you this day in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth from a beautiful sunny Philadelphia and to tell you that Jesus loves you, God loves you and he wants you to simply understand that my videos are not to freak you out or to scare you but to simply make you understand that everything where we are right now in our lives no matter how bad it is or how good it is it's exactly where we are all supposed to be those of you who have been suffering and are already suffering you know for a fact you are the bride of christ especially when you know you've been repentant and you've been doing things the right way in repentance walking repentance remember guys something that this morning holy spirit has reminded me is that god jesus christ holy spirit will never ever will never ever reward boastful prideful people in other words forgive me for that you will never ever be rewarded with a breakthrough or with appropriate um with a prophecy or a comprehension of things to come or warnings through the holy spirit holy spirit cannot stomach ache proudful boastful egotistical people and neither can of course our lord jesus christ and therefore of course father god and we know guys that what how do you know besides the fact that we know to test the spirits and the testing of the spirits you can simply pray about it but there is of course a test that father god has given us an actual test and the test is in accordance is in first book of john chapter 4 verse 1 to 3 or 1 to 4 where when you get that vision or when you get the dream you must command those spirits you literally you pause it you stop everything and you say in the name of jesus i command you to repeat spirits i command you to repeat after me jesus is come in the flesh and they must stop and they might simply repeat. If this is a messenger from Adonai, God of Israel, an angel, if this is the Holy Spirit, you will hear Jesus is come in the flesh. Simple as that. If you hear silence, Jesus, I cannot stress this enough. I want you to all understand this. Again, test of the first book of John, chapter four, verse one to four, or one to three. You must, guys, use that test with people, with yourselves, especially when you receive messages. If you already receive a dream, right? Afterwards, what do you do? You simply, I've noticed a lot of brothers and sisters who I know love Jesus, who I know love God, and you know what they do? I know that they are, for a fact, have been receiving dreams from demons. As much as they love God, as much as they love Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they've been beguiled by the enemy because they're not cautious enough they're not careful enough because they're not and they're careful in all other ways with everything else they do what i'm saying is guys you need to understand you need to be tactical this is the god is simply allowing those things because he's testing everything and everyone he wants the best of the best with him if you he said jesus said buy from me gold refining fire right refining fire that means purchase I'm a gold refining fire. Why? Because I've been blessed with the spirit of wisdom from Father God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And by the way, Holy Spirit or Spirit of God is a spirit of Jesus Christ of Nazareth inside of us. A spirit from God or Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit. It's a, it is a spirit of prophecy, point blank. And the truth in the matter is, if you are one of those people like me, if you have truly allowed that Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you in everything that you do in your life, you're concerned with God's opinion, you're concerned with what God thinks, with what Jesus would want you to do, what Jesus would want you to say, to think, even when you make those little mistakes here and there, and some of them can be big. Why? Because they waste our time. Why? They can cause other hurts in the families by us making the wrong decisions or us teaching the brethren, teaching the church, teaching the bride of Christ or passing on the information, wrong information. Usually it's the church. Those are who are not as experienced. Those who already assume that this person is so blessed. This person is legit. This person, I've tested the spirits. 
you know, 99 times, but that one time you didn't test it, that's when the devil will slip one in. Do you understand? So when I'm teaching you, I'm telling you guys, go look a verse up, go please look them up. Because even though I don't want to make a mistake, what if I'll give you accidentally a wrong number? You need to be able to, not that it matters if you're going to quote it the right way. You know, the devils know when it's the right, the word of God, even when it's watered down, because it's all about our intent. If you in your mind, with your mind, body, soul, spirit, you know, you're serving Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No one can, the devil knows you're not serving him. Do you understand what I mean? They know that. They know there's no, no gates of hell will prevail that you will serve him. Yet the devil will try to convince some of you through spiritual warfare that somehow because of what you said, made them believe that they serve you. Made them believe that they are here for you, working for you. No, 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 no. They know if you have a Holy Spirit inside of you, they know that there's nothing that they can do but other than to cause confusion and mischief in your life. So please understand the testing of the spirit is extremely important with every topic, with every situation, with every dream, every vision, every person, especially someone like me who is telling you all the time how much spiritual warfare I go through on daily basis. I don't want to tell you necessarily what is this all about because some of us have heavy anointings on us. Some of us simply have been abused our whole lives. Why? Because of the anointing and the weight we carry. Some of us have truly have been, you know, so to speak, as I say it in, in a city, right? Gangster. We've been gangster for Jesus. Meaning we do any, we, we were, God knew that the moment he's going to correct us, we were going to repent and we were going to be by the book and we were not going to sin. And if you Holy Spirit feel Holy Spirit led in truth and in honesty, your whole life will be changed. It's a lifestyle. It isn't once a week. It isn't once a day. It's simply all day, all night. Husbands and wives must incorporate God, Jesus Christ, praise and worship together with, with between one another, between children with their children, teaching 10 commandments to their children. You know, some of us are not together with our families and it's difficult, you know, I'm not together with my fiance and I have a daughter. And years ago, forgive me, something is touching me. Years ago, I taught her on the 10 commandments. I also taught her on speaking life and how important, imperative it is that she is to use the skills that I taught her because this is something that Jesus, her God, she herself at six, five years old, she was saying, mommy, don't you know, Jesus is God. And you know, at that age, when, as they get older, like 10, 12 years old, other kids will make in a city, will make fun of them. And, and, and it, it's a shame, you know, and she wants to just be like all other kids. But I told her already, you know, our children are not like other children. And we need to, whether they like it or not, don't, don't be harsh with them. You, you need to put your foot down and continue on pulling them every chance you get, you know, and, and keep telling them, listen, don't ever do what the rest is doing. You know, I know you want to try this video game. You want to do this, but am I for video games? No. Am I against them? Yes. But I know when she's going to go over to her father's house, I kept her protective, protecting, protected away from them for, for more than 10 years. But then the time came and her dad just told her yes. And it started with educational game. And, and then, you know, because her friends are all on there and COVID hit. And, you know, that's how they could see one another, talk to one another and chat with one another. What I'm saying is she's nowhere near how other kids can be obs are obsessed with it but I don't like it. And when I remind her of certain things, you know, my, and my daughter gets upset that no mommy, this isn't, this isn't how people live today. This isn't how people do it. And she just says this just to say it. She doesn't know any better. Then I also realized that majority of things that she, even I talked to her about, she doesn't even understand them. And yet she answers them. In other words, I know when someone else, another teenager kid would come up to my daughter that is 10 years old and talked, let's say she's talking with a 12 year old. I know because she's been so shielded and protected as I did it. I didn't understand what THC was at age of 18 years old. That it's an, in, an ingredient, not of heroin, but of weed. 
and that I was lied to. Do you understand, guys? So we have to be so overprotective of our children, but it has repercussions also later on in the real world. And if you have a grandchild or a daughter or son or a grandchild that you've been protecting majority of your life, whether it was five years, 10 years, don't give up on them. Keep on praying for them. Pray for our children. Pray for our, our prepubescent children, for our teenagers to be blessed with the spirit of wisdom from God. Just as you have been blessed with spirit of discernment from our Heavenly Holy Father and spirit of wisdom from our Heavenly Holy Father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we all have been blessed with that beautiful spirit. Why? Because our children are simply, they are on their way fast right now to realize within the next, I say, top year and a half, two years, especially the prepubescent children, the teenagers, that they are not like others. And they're never going to be like other children because they are your children. They're your grandchildren. And because you have been so prosecuted, my daughter, for example, rejects any kind of topic on witchcraft, on prosecution. She simply at this point, I believe she thinks that I'm, you know, that I'm pretty mentally. I don't think she thinks I'm mentally unstable. But what I'm saying is that was a topic I know here and there. And we have to be careful how much we push on what topic, especially those of us who are not united, living in families, marriages that are together. So this is a warning to all of you guys. Don't give up on them. Be patient. Be patient also with the grown-ups. Remember, it is the devil that accuses. Remember, when you, those people are accusing you of something or even your children, remember, teach them early on that we are dealing not with people. Even when you think they have stolen something from you, even when it's physically stolen from you, like money, a purse, like it was the past year and a half with me, large sums of money were stolen from me, not once, but twice, then a purse, brand new purse, expensive purse, filled with brand new things. Guys, that's what they want. That's what the devil wants. That's what the devil wants. The devil wants you to curse God over $10, over $100, over $10,000, over your child. You need to see it. What I'm saying is, guys, as a test that you can simply use it to your advantage where you can learn how to overcome it. And you can call, call it out and still show yourself worthy, show yourself approved. Where you can simply come through on that topic with our Father God. With Jesus Christ, where you can go and show yourself worthy of the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth sacrifice. We, he has died on a cross for our sins and the sins of the world. My point being, brothers and sisters, spiritually we are perfect through the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right? No matter, no amount of good deeds will get us to heaven. That's a fact. However, if you are competing for positions, if you are truly the bride of Christ, for only the brides of Christ can be the kings, the kings or the so-called queens, ruling the new earth with Jesus Christ of Nazareth and the priests after the order of Melchizedek, Melchizedek, right? Only remember those from the bride of Christ group can be doing those functions. And by the way, as the great tribulation is approaching, those who will be left, we will all as the bride of Christ enter the great tribulation. It is not so that you're just going to be whisked away. You weren't awakened and trained and taught on to test the spirits, to tell the diff, to bless with spirit of wisdom, spirit of discernment and all other types of Holy Spirit gifts. My beloved sister, my beloved brother, just so, just so Jesus Christ can now whisk you away and take you to safety as you will be whisked away to safety for majority of the great tribulation, you need to understand that you're not going to be whisked away because someone has to harvest and you, the sooner you're going to come to this conclusion, it doesn't mean you're faithless. It is in accordance with the Bible. Jesus said, you must be an overcomer. You must be an overcomer. You must be an overcomer. You, we, you, me, no matter what church you are from. Jesus said this to the seven angels from the seven churches. You must be all, all of us must be an overcomer. Whether you, whether you all have a title on earth as a human of an angel and you're in charge of these billions of people, some of us, some of them, excuse me, or at least millions upon millions, right? There's almost 8 billion people on earth. 
and all of them fall under the seven ages, seven churches. That's a lot of people for, for, for to be one of those angels, especially that obedient one, the angel of the Church of Philadelphia. That's a lot of people to, in the future, to manage or to, however it works in spirit, through the Holy Spirit, everything is done. God is amazing. God is great. God is good every day. And I'm saying this after someone who, who was just, just as I told you guys, remember, on warranted undeserved curse spell no matter what type of witchcraft doesn't stick it will not stick you might feel it you might perceive it but it doesn't stick so what did they do they literally had to use violence violence through astral projections violence through those demonic entities in order to break my hair off and I'm telling you I'm not lying to you when I'm feeling God is good every day Jesus is so awesome I feel complete peace I know that hair will grow back. Not only will it grow back, because you see, brothers and sisters, I've been blessed with beautiful, thick, beautiful hair. And right before that happened, I'm going to be honest with you, there was, for a year, I was receiving compliments after compliments, because I was wearing, usually, I like hats like this, and I would wear my thick braid. This is all I have left. It looks like there's still something there, but I never had bald spots when you would put the hair, you know, hair upwards. For a woman that is 45 years old, that is in her prime. My body is, is that of an 80 year old. That's how it much it has been beaten down. But guys, mentally, spiritually, I am at my prime. I am at my best. The body, I said, Father, help me change it. Help me bring it up to, you know, to date on, on my nutrients, on my vitamins, on my, whatever I need to do to change that I can do alter still, if I can afford it with food. Help me, Father, do that take care of my body better because it is his temple he gave us our human flesh to store so we can be the beholders those are temple of god your flesh is a temple of god you are the beholder of a holy spirit spirit of god is inside of you the greatest possession in the universe it's up to you says the holy spirit and jesus christ today do you want to be just okay with prayers and praise and worship or do you actually want to hear Jesus Christ, God, so well? Where are you going to be here on earth and you're going to be hearing Jesus Christ in the throne room? Your spirit will be united with, through the Holy Spirit, with Jesus Christ, with God, as one. Where to the point where you can be a leader here on earth because you're going to be able to take direction during very high levels of stress, during very stressful time. Can you do that? Hi, thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. Thank you. The whole, that's the whole point. How much do you want to serve God? A lot of people, you know where they never get it past a certain point? You guys thought that, that using a number strong score cordon is some sort of reward? It is not. No one who has the Holy Spirit will go and rely on a book that was written by human beings. Strong score cordon is not Holy Spirit written or Holy Spirit inspired. Bible, however, was written by Father God, right? Spoken by Father God, by Jesus Christ himself. The Word of God is one of his titles. And of course, the Holy Spirit. Point being, strong score cordons is not. So people who still today have been intercepted by the enemy for seven years, for 10 years, and have been received dreams also, unfortunately, from the enemy. Majority of them by now, you've been doing strong school cordons, Bible wheel numbers to confirm who you think you are or your position within the kingdom of heaven. And in seven years, you haven't moved forward in anything, not in spiritual warfare, not in knowing Jesus Christ of Nazareth intimately because you're doing strong school cordons messages. Who do you think? And meanwhile, in, inside of you, there is a Holy Spirit without limit. Spirit of God is inside of you. My beloved brother, Jason Paul Stevens, I pray that you're hearing this. Do you understand? It's time to move forward. You got to come out of that deception, that delusion. All of us, as the bride of Christ or as, 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 as the church, no matter what church you are part of, the earth consists of seven angels of the seven churches. Bible is very clear on that. Only the angels of the Church of Philadelphia, Church of Thyatira, those are the most obedient churches. Okay, there is also, point being guys, no matter who you are, we all had something that we had to overcome. People from the Church of Philadelphia are the ones who were from the beginning, 
100% for the Lord. They repented and they simply changed it. Their whole life was changed. Their inner outer man was crucified. That's why the devil prosecutes them so heavily. This is why the enemy prosecutes the angel of the Church of Philadelphia so heavily because that woman, and I was shown clearly it's a woman. It's a woman also of Revelation 12. Literally, a woman of a chapter of Revelation 12. She's going to be a great leader in the years, in the in, a, when, in the days to come, let's say that. And point being, guys, we all in human flesh, we have to deal with bitterness, with anger issues, with our own bitterness, other people's bitternesses, whether a small percentage or big percentage. We still dealt with it. That's part of being human. That's part. That's what it means to have a human experience. That's what it means to be a human. We had experiences with hatred and with love. I, for example, never had experiences with jealousy until I was in my 30s. And I didn't understand jealousy at all. At all. Until it was as a first forced on me. But then I realized, you know, excuse me. Then I realized that I was dealing, I guess, with, with jealousy. And of, of course, it was over nothing because it was uh, induced paranoia by the enemy majority of it was induced paranoia i keep saying by the enemy and the moment i realized that you know i repented and i apologized to the father and it was set aside the moment you realize that you simply are fighting for the soul and your spirit that's been paid for by the blood of jesus and your flesh was paid for by the precious blood of jesus christ of nazareth brothers and sisters there's still satan still doesn't want to let us go the devil's demons still don't want to let you go. They want you to go party. They want you to go fornicate. They want you to go do things that you were doing. Even if you've never done them like me, some of those things. If I've done something foolish, it was once or twice. Point being, if it was done once or twice, they, are treat, they will treat you, the enemy will treat you as if you are doing them or have done them your whole life or non-stop and, 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 and you need to be prepared for that and this could be done against you by causing slander through other humans this could be done by causing slander at a place of work slander in a place of families they already think majority of them that we are crazy that we are insane so what I'm saying is it's ignore it ignore it it doesn't matter it's irrelevant in your head, when that happens, we need to learn. You need to learn and start doing. You need to start rebuking the devils. The, they're attacking you, those demons, through those people. You need to literally, guys, start rebuking them in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Jealousy, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Strifa, war, pity, self-pity. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Another thing is, how many of you that listening to worldly music? Because there is, I'm not saying, I believe it's in majority of the worldly music today, such as whether it's rock and roll or heavy metal, or for example, um, definitely rap music, worldly rap music, right? So I noticed that demons of fornication or lust, drug addictions, poverty, um, uh, rape even, have been coming with some of those musics. I'm not saying with all of them or all of the songs. I'm saying it depends who's singing. It depends who dedicated or raps the song about and what spirits wrote the song behind that person that is already a sinner writing that song and then rapping. This is what I'm saying is don't listen to it. Don't listen. I tell the mothers and fathers, please don't listen to the worldly music with your children in the car, man. Like, are you, are you crazy? First of all, curse, curses, bad words upon bad words. Why would you want that in front of your baby? That baby doesn't even have a chance to be a baby, man. And then if the, the enemy gets the parents to argue in a, with filthy words and they're unrepentant, do you know that such sometimes those unclean spirits, God can allow them to even come against a child that's four years old, even four and a half, five years old? Sometimes, sometimes. 
I'm not saying God loves children, God protects children, but I'm saying it can happen also. Majority of the times, a mother, a praying mother, praying father, repented mother, father, no such things can take place. No such things can happen. But in certain situations, God has allowed it to later on teach a mother, father, people lesson. Unfortunately, we live in a world where people are so puffed up and into one another and they only want God when it's convenient for them. They only want Jesus Christ when they want to be healed or when they need money or when they want their bills paid. Listen, that's not how God operates and we know that and God is not going to be around people like that. God only answers those who truly love him, those who know his name and to know God's name. The name of Yeshua HaMashiach, whether you know it as Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it's irrelevant. Whether you know, you say Holy Father or Adonai, God of Israel, Alpha and Omega or Aleph and Taf in Hebrew, point being to know God's name in order for him to respond and come and answer your prayers. And he doesn't have to answer our prayers every time. He makes certain promises, yes, they're 100% guaranteed. But it, he decides when and he decides how. And we don't, we, we, you know, at the beginning for a while, I was always expected an answer because God always took care of me. And he had to show me that, no, 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 honey, I'm God. You're the clay. I'm the potter. And if I choose to, I can even slay, smash the clay. I can slay the clay. Watch what I'm going to do with this devil attacking you. That day he pulled them, he ripped them from, from literally, they were attacking my house. They were attacking me through something called holes in walls and astral projections. In other words, they illegally got a hold of my bedroom and they were doing things through the bedroom walls to me and inside of my bedroom. They wanted, they wanted to basically offend me, if, if, let's just say that, and offend God. Let's, let me tell you, sometimes God, in order to pressure his saints to work harder, he will cause certain like that situations where he doesn't want to hurt us, but he will motivate us out of necessity. He will push you to the limits. So some days you might be there praying seven hours, six hours after a 10 hour work day, and you're going to have to be a mom. Some days you might not have to sleep at all. I've been there. I've done that for years is what I'm telling you. And no one believes me is what I'm telling you. That's part of becoming a righteous child of God, you will be horrifically attacked. So just as Father God will challenge you, Jesus will challenge you because he trained me fast. I've learned all of this in under three years, guys. However, today I know the enemy has been abusing me for much, much, much longer. And I know that this was the enemy and God was already helping me there. He was there when I was out there in the world. Just as he's helping you, just as he's helping our kids, just as he's helping our worldly, you know, family members. He loves us all the same. But for leaders, for people who are, he commanded to buy from him gold refining fire. To buy gold refining fire, it means you, through the Holy Spirit, you're going to ask for guidance in finding out where are the people who have similar experiences that you have. And the Holy Spirit will guide you to them. And then you're going to test the spirits on them. I am gold refined in fire, no doubt. You experience what I experience, you do things by the book, you walk in repentance, you are repentant, you trust and believe in all God's Jesus Christ promises, you perform all his teachings, you believe in the Bible 100%, not 90%, 100%. A lot of people, this is another thing, I would like to bring it up to you guys. A lot of people allow the enemy in, you know how? by this believing Bible and God's creation story. If God says, I created, he created earth out of the waters, then this is what he did. That he, God says in Psalm 148, 150, that he created the firmament, and this is what he did. If in Psalm 19, God says, I, I created a circuit for the sun. A circuit means something circular over something circular. Psalm 84 or 10, 104 or 105, I think, says clearly that there is uh, columns, you know, uh, foundations for the earth that shall never be shaken. Key, key sentence, key words, foundations for the earth that shall never be shaken, columns that shall never be moved or pillars that shall never be moved. What does it mean? That earth is not a spinning ball. 
Earth is not a spinning ball, and I know it's shocking. It's not a conspiracy, it's a fact. We don't live on a spinning ball. Everything above us, the sun, the moon is a, the sun is a bigger light, the moon is a lesser light, and everything else, all those, you cannot go there and travel there. This is an enclosed ecosystem where we live, unfortunately, with demons, with unclean spirits, do you understand? And they're everywhere. They're invisible to our human eye and they're a manifestation of God has forbidden, forbidden. And we, of course, through our beloved Heavenly Holy Father, who loves his children so much, has given us full power and authority over all scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. So nothing shall by any means hurt us. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 20. Through Jesus Christ. Holy Father has given us full power and authority over all the spirits of this earth. So whether they're from hell or earth or above earth in second heaven. Because third heaven is above firmament is where Jesus Christ and, the thro and Father God is in the throne room. Okay. There is no angels as angels in human flesh on earth other than if he sends them. They are in their angelic bodies. The seven years of the seven churches are the future. Those are titles. Those people are humans and those are people. Those are real people. They're being prosecuted. Some are still lost and confused living in the world. Some of them have very nice affluent lives. I'm saying brothers and sisters, this is not the time to worry what position I have within the kingdom. What am I going to get as a reward for serving God? Uh, uh, can I get this? Can I get that? This is the time of, of equipping oneself, ourselves with knowing Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth intimately. And Jesus said, you know, the father, you know, this, excuse me, you know, the son, you know, the father, meaning if whenever you're going to get in trouble, either now or in the future, if you will need step-by-step -step instruction, you need to understand guys that in order for you to hear God and giving you instruction, you need to hear that Holy Spirit really, really good inside of you. Guess what? You will be you will fall a victim to the devils, to the demons, to the mark of the beast, and God forbid, to the image of the beast, the mark of the beast, if you will not, I repeat, if you will not hear the Holy Spirit inside of you. Disobedience to Ten Commandments will put that lamp, that light out of that lamp inside of such people. I'm not saying you, you, of course not you, but I'm simply saying, in order for Father God, Adonai God of Israel, glory be to his most holy, powerful name, to answer us. We have to know, have an intimate relationship with Father God through his son, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, through the Holy Spirit. Simple as that. And again, a reminder, Holy Spirit, I repeat, for it is written, Jesus told us, please look up the verse. I'm not going to give you the verse. Holy Spirit only speaks about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, only glorifies Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and shows us things to come. That's it. Holy Spirit is not going to show you vulgar things, vile things. When Father shows me things, for example, I knew a woman and she was receiving a message that I know from the Holy Spirit wanted to show her that there's demonic entities living in plasma screens, which I teach on also in our cell phones. So, for example, Holy Spirit showed her that there is like bugs, shape of bugs living in a cell phone coming out of the cell phone. You can go look up that video in my oil is the name of Yeshua channel early on when I tell you and direct you where to go and what video to look up where a man 13 years ago burned was burning cell phones in a microwave. How you can see a devil living inside of another devil living inside of cell phones. I'm talking like those old analog cell phones, but barely, they were barely digitalized. Like they had, they had no plasma screen and they lived in those two. So imagine what lives in, what can live in them now? What can live, the bigger the screen, I believe the bigger entity can reside, I believe that's possible. This is why it's so important to pray over all your purchases. This is why it's imperative to comprehend who the Holy Spirit is, that it's here to unify. Its job is to guide you and push you forward to unify your human spirit through the Holy Spirit. So you can be in a throne room as if in a throne room, 
taking direction as a spirit, human spirit, your lamp burning full brightly here inside of your human flesh on earth at the same time, kind of like quantum entanglement, like quantum entanglement. Okay, that's the point of all of these that I'm teaching you, the narrow path. I've given you instructions, step-by-step -step instruction, guys, for narrow path life style and, and, and also how to obtain it, how to get it. We got to learn things where we're going to be literally, guys, this music, this is a man who's older than me and he listens to music like that. Like, come on, man. You gotta learn to tune it out. You gotta learn to say to simply, I don't even hear it anymore. My, everybody around be like, you hear this? What's this? What's that? I don't hear it. I don't hear dogs barking. The devil had someone, this neighbor move in. He literally, guys, there was, they were taking out the dog, I think on purpose, literally guys. They some paid someone money, take the dog out between 12 and three o'clock in the morning. By the way, in the big cities, that's illegal. And it's illegal because when it's, when it's loud, you can go get a ticket. They're gonna send you a ticket because if a, if one person calls in, a cop, you're gonna have cops knocking out you, uh, on your door over nothing. Lately, in big cities, cops don't no longer even bother with the with arresting people for pink lights, green lights, rainbow lights. They're just driving whatever. People were shooting up drugs last year and the year prior on the streets when it's warmer out in the open. People don't get arrested. But they're gonna they're gonna try to tell me buying buying medication people who have no health insurance is illegal? No, it's legal. And what I'm saying is this is a whole other topic, because I was talking to the father about you know the topic of is what is that what consists of a pharmacia versus what is um, a normal ibuprofen vitamins or people who are taking medications that are prescribed so they can live day to day lives. Some people have chronic pain from chronic conditions, as long as they're sober, as long as they live a sober life and they don't seek out to get high, to get drunk, they're not drunkards, they're not high. They're, they're... What I'm saying is God knows who you are. If you are taking such and such a medication and God still rewarded you with breakthroughs, with all the things that you were supposed to be blessed with, gifts of the Holy Spirit, God is there with you. I rebuke this music in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I rejected spirits away from me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is what I mean. The devil knows I'm recording. So he has a man drive up. This is how the enemy works. They're going to bring a man that instead of parking, turning down the music, he goes to the store, leaves a pickup truck in the middle of the street in a city. Okay. In a city and, and goes and goes shopping. Truck is wide open. Re windows roll down. Tell me it's so cold today. Why is, are the windows number one roll down? Number two, why is the music playing loud when he went shopping to the, to the store, pharmacy, whatever it is? Why? Why? This is what I'm talking about. For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, guys, but against principalities, against spirit, uh, spiritual wickednesses in high spiritual places. Evil, evil powers. Not the people. People don't know that they're being used. They're clueless. This is why it's so important for us to speak life and avoid death, speaking death and avoid agitation, aggravation. Because this is freaking immature, man. This is immature, dude. So I'm going to go. I love you. Remember, how much are you going to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you today? How much are you going to allow the Holy Spirit, my beloved brother, my beloved sister, to guide you, to take you? How far are you going to go is the question. This is what God wants to know from all of you today. Are you going to let him guide you? He wants to take you up higher and you need to step up your game. All of you. I love you. Bye-bye.